You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Johnson. Oh, the TV. On the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Graceland After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Graceland After Show. Oh, yeah. Where is it? Where's the EDM intro? We don't need no uh, EDM intro because we are awesome. We don't even need it. Welcome, After Buzzers, to the Graceland After Show. We are doing season or er, episode six <laughs> of season one, that. Goodbye High. And we're so stoked to be here Super tonight. Stoked. Myself, for several reasons. I'm Julie Parton, and I've never hosted with Stephanie yes. before. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Georgie. Happy to be here, like always. But on the other side of the table, we have a powerhouse special guest for you. Brandon J. McLaren. Yeah. 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 What? Throwback. <laughs> <laughs> and? And, I mean, I, I can't even compete with that. I should just not even say it. Now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm Stephen Lemieux. And handsome as ever, the guys on the other side of the table. We are so excited. We're going to recap the episode for you really quickly and then get in your questions with Brandon J. If you're watching live, go ahead and call in or tweet us your questions. We may or may not see them. So, starting off, we, we find ourselves at the Narcotics Anonymous meeting. Yes. We get a few nice little quotes from Briggs, like, life is a lie. It's not easy following me, Mike. I know. He's mm -hmm. given his best man speed up. To, he's given his best man speech. He's like, oh, you know, this is how it is. I'm so genuine. But did you guys think that he was being genuine? No. No? I think he was. I don't know. It's a, it's like it's such mixed feelings with him because sometimes you want to listen and at the very end of him being perfectly with what he's saying, you're like, wait, did you just play me right now? Yeah. You know? I definitely at the beginning of the scene thought that he was there to sell drugs to other recovering junkies. And I think mm. that's what we were supposed to think. Pull a Jesse Pinkman. Yeah. Like sell it to the narc <laughs> Oh no, I think he I, I definitely just thought that he was going because it made me believe that he was a user. Not to sell, but to just help himself out. Or what maybe about with the them? duffel bag? The, the coffee maker was in it. Unless I know, he but didn't it you somewhere? think it had marijuana or coke or meth or whatever? It would have been, it would no, have been because the it was too much. It was too perfect. Yeah. It was too. Yeah. yeah. I actually, I actually did fall for that. I kind of thought that he still had the heroin, and I thought it would be ironic or dramatic irony that Mike's talking to him at this Narcanon and he's got the heroin in his bag. But I was wrong. But at the same time, still do not believe it one bit. At all. He is so fake. And I love how they did, like, the montage of him just through the window. I know, right? It, it was, it was like, just to make it look like he was talking for a really long time. But this is, this, is, this is Paul Briggs we're talking about, guys. This is the best agent at Graceland. You really think he's going to let Mike follow him if you didn't want him to follow him? Yeah, you could definitely tell he wanted him. He wanted Mike to follow him. But Mike fell for the whole thing. Yeah. He did. He's, but he's a sucker for Briggs from the beginning. Like, know, he knew who he was. Saved his life. That's the great thing about those characters is that Mike's also a brilliant yeah. guy. Mm -hmm. Top of his class. Which Let's they not forget that, to Briggs. Right? Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Right? So he has, uh, while he has his man crush on Briggs, he's also, it's also a battle of wits. Mm -hmm. So he's having to battle, like, you know, fighting him and trying to catch him, but also being in awe. Right. And uh, and wanting to be like him at the same time is really interesting. Yeah. 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 But whatever it was, they they go out and they have this moment. Briggs talks about how much he loves surfing. It's the closest thing to getting the high without the needle. I even that was a not believable. I know it seems so scripted. This whole thing. It seems like he wanted Mike to follow him there, and he wanted Mike to go out so that he could tell him this story. It's. I think he sounds more like a big brother. I just feel like sometimes he's being protective. He could have his secrets, but I don't know. Maybe he's just like don't like he was trying to explain to Charlie or, uh, later. You know, just don't worry about it. Like I know what I'm doing. You're still new, kid. Let me do what I'm doing without you trying to be. And he already peeped him out trying to you know the investigation from like the first scenes, yeah. the first show episodes. So maybe he's just trying to back him off like easily. That this is great to like listen to you guys. Pontificate what do you think? about the show because I've never watched it with people 
who weren't involved in the show. Oh, okay. Uh, but you're really getting the sense that you understand, like, everybody in the house are they're professional liars. Right. So you really can't... Anything can. they say at any time could be for some ulterior motive. Absolutely. And clearly it's... You, that's what you all are uh -huh. getting, right? Yeah. You guys aren't believing anything that's going on. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, so it's working. On? It's great. We're the least trusting of bricks, which right. I think is intentional. Right. Mm -hmm. But this backstory brought us, hands down, the most gruesome scene I've seen on this show yeah, and on that TV. Was pretty gnarly. He, so we hear Briggs' backstory, which, do we think this is true or not? Kind of. I, I know what you guys were saying was that he was, uh, Stephen was meant saying that he was saying it so like, oh yeah, this and then throwing this in and then that happened also. He's but... saying it so flippantly. It's like when you have an amazing actor that you're so used to them being amazing on screen and you can tell they're acting. Like he did they, fake good. They dumb it down a bit. Yeah. Like they dumb it down to a point where you can tell they're acting. And that's what I'm seeing with Briggs, because he it goes into that mindset. Like if someone's gonna do a dramatic, dramatic scene, they're just gonna do a dramatic scene as if they are. Right. They're not gonna do a dramatic scene by going, Yeah, it was really tough. I know, right? That 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 heroin. Briggs is big <laughs> daddy <laughs> though. That's how he talks. Like. No, he doesn't. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I mean like he could if he wanted to, because at this point, Mike really is like this little puppy who just keeps coming behind him. And this is just one more thing that he's trying to like Yo, Mike, relax, back down, you know. Well, to sum up the story, he said that he was really involved with the Mexican cartel. It got so dangerous because Jangles, they heard Keys, was chopping these people up El hombre as we saw the body. Oh, what did you just say? El hombre ya, key man. Oh, key man, yes. okay. And we find out that Briggs had a very close relationship with his control officer, mm -hmm. who was still involved in the Mexican cartel when they took Briggs off the case, went down to Mexico, made the worst mistake of his life, and instead of cutting him up and feeding him to himself, they injected him with heroin for weeks at a time. And, they and then kicked him out of the door. Which I like that Mike said that what they were doing is a, a big middle finger to the Bureau. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because everyone else is thinking, no, why would they let Which you go? Which might why be would believable. They let you yeah. You know, because there is, there is real strife between the Mexican Federal Bureau and the, and the U.S. version. They butt right. heads all the time because they deal with a lot of cross-border. Of course. You know. So and they get one of their own, one, someone doped up, like... The Federale, that really, yeah, I think they're called. Exactly. In Mexico, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But so at the same time, I just can't help but question that it's just information that he can change to his benefit. Because there's no way that Mike can research into an agent that's in Mexico that got killed, like the one that he found killed. There's no way they know, like, how convenient is it that this guy's fingers were chopped off and there's no fingerprints? They don't know who he really is. Mike can't look into that. Um, the only thing he can look into is a guy named Jangles, which, I mean, that's very kind of His a story generic. all sounded, yep, yeah, you're right. It's, it's all a generic story, and there's no way that Mike can prove it. There's no way Briggs can prove it, and just the way he told it was... It was just so unbelievable. Almost insulting, actually. So you're not convinced? Is that what you're trying to say? I'm not convinced. I, I don't think that happened to Briggs at all. Well, I have a theory. And I can't be the only one that thought this. Some of you guys at home or some of you in this room probably think the same thing. Jangles was his Mexican control officer friend. Yeah, because he looked like him. Yeah, he had his, think, eye, his he eyes had completely eyes. looked like he did. Absolutely. And maybe that's why he didn't chop him up. Yeah. Because he was like, look, you're getting too involved. I need to do something that I know that's going to get you off the case because as, you know, FBI agents, they're, they're not supposed to do drugs. And he was really close to him, so we knew that would be his weakness. Wow. Yeah. I actually do like that theory. I yeah. know, right? Yeah. That's if it's a true story. That is, the only other true. thing it would be is that he just went to Tecate and wanted to get high on his own, and then he's just trying to hide it. But otherwise, I don't know what else would be. I got I to gotta point out the, uh, the story they told as well, though, was uh, the last guy we had in here, we starved him. Then we cut him up, and then we then, cooked him, seasoned it, and saying. made him beg for it. Like, feed him to himself. All of that stuff happened before the intro, and we were like, dang, yeah. Grace. <laughs> 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 it was me. Speaking of the what? intro, did you like how they did that with the credits? Like, they created a new intro for the show with Daniel Sanjata walking out of that house with the music playing and everything. Yeah. It was like, an, it was filmed as if it was another show. What? Mm. I guess I didn't even notice because I couldn't get the image of the chopped up guy and out of my mind. It was very music video-esque, which oh. I really like, when they do a different artistic point of view with the episode. And 
giving a shout out. This episode was written by Joe Henderson. Who Joe was Henderson. Yeah. Our guest Big on Joe Henderson. Episode. Who I guess we are finding out now is disturbed at levels that we weren't aware of. Yeah, <laughs> that's why after 10 o'clock, I don't hang out with him anymore. I'm like, I'm like I got to go home, I don't know what's home, going Joe. on over there. <laughs> I'm going to settle up here. <laughs> well, one of the things that we saw throughout this entire episode was just discovering things about the characters that we didn't know. Mm -hmm. How honest are they with each other? How honest are they with themselves? And one big plot that we saw is Charlie talking to Johnny and convinced that she's fine. Mm -hmm. Johnny is a little skeptical about it, though. He is. I love Johnny. But you would oh, be too, ball. though. I mean, it's 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 not that he's skeptical as much as he's just he's really he's worried. He's just looking out because exactly, and he had his yeah. background. His brother used to be in that gang. He's mm -hmm. he grew up in stuff like that, so he's just checking. Like everyone who's been involved in any type of drugs, they know. Like, are you sure you're good? Because you couldn't get back on it. And it's been twice now that she's exactly. shot right. him, yeah. not just once. Yeah. And he saw the reaction twice. he gave to her. He saw yeah. her shake. Like, yeah. she didn't have to say anything for him to notice. So of course he's gonna question it. Mm -hmm. He thinks everything that she was saying is a line. Mm -hmm. It was only twice. It'll never be me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she's so she's so honest. Like when he says, uh, he says, I had a friend shoot someone over getting another hit. Like, kill the guy over getting another hit. Would I be able to understand that if I took it? And she says, yeah, you would. And then the next scene we get with Briggs and the whole Graceland when she goes in front of everyone. Well, that's because what your character said is that for Charlie, this house is family. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's true, and that's why she's so involved in it. For her, I would think, or maybe, again, and I hate to do the female-male thing, but we obviously, as genders, think completely different. But to be an agent and to be undercover and to have to go through things like that, I would think to be sane, you do. You need to be able to look at the people that you live in that house as your family. Because well, not, that was the whole go. idea. The this, this show is based on right. true events, right? And the whole idea behind a house like that was for these agents to have a place to go to where they could be honest with other people. Mm -hmm. Because if you go home to your family, you can't do that. It's just so that honest. was the whole idea behind that. Like, let's make a place where everybody can be who they really are because everybody else is going through the same thing. Um, and that way you guys can all look out with each other. And what's interesting is it doesn't always work like that. Mm -hmm. And right. the lies seep in anyway, right. you know, because they're so used to hiding and keeping secrets. You but know? at the same time, you have to do the right thing. So yeah. what's right, what's it wrong. It gets very complicated. So what was really getting to Charlie is that the entire apartment, the CI's apartment, was not coming together for her. There were drugs mm -hmm. readily in there. Mm -hmm. It was locked up. I thought, and I think she thinks, that that's Briggs's side yes, house. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what I thought. Absolutely. Well, she starting was, to come together for her right, a little yeah. bit. And she was trying to go back there. We get her uh, we get her apologizing to Briggs about cleaning it up and he's mm -hmm. and she's yeah. like, No, I'll, I'll go I'll clean it up, I'll go tidy it up. She's trying to go back there because as we saw in was it was last episode where uh, she saw the cabinet that's locked. Yeah. And, and then maybe, that's when he went to go grab his stash. Going into the previews from next week, we see that there's like a hole in the wall. Yes. And I feel like maybe she felt like air coming from that cabinet, and that's what she was feeling in that scene. Because she doesn't say anything, and she doesn't hear or smell anything. So that's what I think it might be. Yeah, it definitely looks like, and not to get into spoilers for next week, but it looks like they go back there and raid that thing and take yeah. it apart. Yeah. But anyway, she's uh, she's all in Briggs's case. There's no secrets here. And he has this he has this thing where he thinks that your secrets are your burden and mine are mine. Mm -hmm. Charlie doesn't feel that way. She goes in front of the entire family of Graceland. With the quickness and says it right I after know. she says she would. Guys, I shot up heroin. Yeah. And she's just, <laughs> no, like, she's just like, like it was you know. nothing. She said it. <laughs> and everybody and only two people. No, Char no. Three Char of you guys were surprised. Buy it, and Johnny not at all. Yeah, and and you mentioned that. Yeah, you know, Jake's like, mentioned. Why are like, all of why, us not how surprised? Come some of y'all know, and some of y'all, yeah. some of we don't. Yeah. I thought the reaction was so subtle. What do you think of the differences between Charlie and Briggs's character, though, with this heroin? Because when you look at Charlie, she's she did it, and she understands what she's done, and she feels ashamed by it. Because she's remorseful, but exactly. But Briggs also feels ashamed by it, but he's taking it a completely different way. Like, if, if he did, if this story that he tells is true, then Charlie talks about it like, yeah, I, I did this. Like, serious, because she's, she's professional. Briggs talks about it. Oh, man, that high, man. There's nothing like that high. 
And that's just so unlike him. If I had to analyze it, I would say that it's easier to get over something that happened to you than to feel regret about something you did yourself. Because yeah. she shot that into her own arm. It was administered to him when he was chained up and nearly tortured. If So I think he feels less guilty about it because he didn't have any choice in the matter. But well, you still wouldn't look back on torture with kind of a, a nostalgic face. You like, know, oh, man. But Briggs, what Briggs has a very, like... Uh, government type mentality where oh it's it all happens this way for like the greater cause where Charlie's thinking no we have to look out for each other now and he like the reason why he says your secrets are your burdens and mine are, or my lies are your burden whatever that line <laughs> sorry I messed it <laughs> Thank up you but... George W <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one that is a good one yeah anyway <laughs> anyways but uh, now I forgot oh. <laughs> oh, okay. he was the, president, reason, so. the reason that he said that is why do you think Briggs said it oh no that he's just yeah he he thinks that he's doing the right thing at the end of the day like you shouldn't say this because it's gonna involve into something well he's else. doing the right thing he's also trying to keep his job yeah yeah and honestly, when he was saying at that... At the end of the day, he's like... Yeah, yeah. Of they course, find out, out for himself. I'm gone, and every case that I've closed can be reopened. Think about that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And Stephanie and I were saying, you know what? That's not actually the worst way to think about something. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have to tell somebody something to get it off of your chest, that's being selfish. Mm -hmm. It's not going to benefit them in any way and only put them in harm's way. Yeah. Like, I see what he was saying No, about of course, that. like, what you don't know can hurt you. They which, both have a compelling argument. Yes, mm -hmm. they do. For their side. But then you have Charlie, who Mike asks where she got the heroin, who then creates another lie and lies mm -hmm. about it. Honestly, you know, that was a weird scene for me between Mike and Charlie. I felt like he sort of was like, why don't you get the heroin, Charlie? <laughs> he did. That he was, was fine. That was, he was being silly. adorable. He was. About it. He was. It. And I, 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 I hate he was trying to use his pretty face to a benefit or whatever, but he just. He was. was. I totally He's, saw the same thing. Like, you and he like had her hair, and I was like, stop. Like, I know. Can you be my boyfriend? I think <laughs> you, <could've, laughs> you know what? Charlie and Johnny had a moment like that, too. They were like putting their hands in each other's hoodie yeah. pockets. You know what? I, I, and I was saying that to you that I love about this house is that y'all are so cool. Oh. Y'all are so Thank cool. Thank you. Like, I want to, I would be Abby. I'd be an Abby. I'd be like, I'll let tell me you come what. kick it. <laughs> like, what are you guys doing tonight? I have, like, I have these gnarly secrets. Do you want to hear mine? Oh, Take me to the house. Yours? And, and y'all would be roommates. My parents watch the show, and they like it. Yeah, my but my too. mom says, whenever they're in the house hanging out, I don't like it because I don't feel cool enough to be watching the show. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> tell her she's cool enough. Tell her I said. <laughs> that, they watch this show. They like this oh, show. Great. They will love you. <laughs> so we find out th that Charlie thinks there's no secrets. Briggs thinks it's for the good of the house that there are secrets. And then we had a shocker with Jake's tonight, which well, this is a perfect episode for you to be here. Yeah, yeah. I was just thinking it worked that out well. It was because it, we got on a personal side of you. Mm -hmm. um, <sighs> before that, though, I wanted to say um, with with we got to talk about like the reasoning behind Briggs's thing. Because we, they go into detail, like, why he didn't want her to tell everyone. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense. Like, don't tell everyone, because now they are technically a witness to your crime. Right, which, again, is, is the burden that he put. And I did like that he said that you you didn't give him any choice, and it's true. Right. Why, you know, why would you do that? Relax. They're, they really didn't have, they just, they didn't need to know, because it wasn't going to affect him either way. She could have said, I'm about to tell an illegal secret. Leave the room if you don't want to hear it. Well, that's, oh, you know, I, and I think that's kind of what the show is about. It's about these kind of two different paradigms about what the house is. Is the house a place that's like a sanctuary no secrets, we can be ourselves, or is the house just like another extension of our lives out there? I know. Which is, you know, and that's really, that's what the show is, comes down to at this most like rudimentary level. Mm -hmm. Like how these people, these different people Deal view the it. house differently. Yeah. And, and it, it, they collide, these two different paradigms are in direct conflict with one another, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Um, and it causes a whole bunch of crazy. Well, we learned from this episode how a lot of them feel about the house. Yes. Right. I feel exactly. like to Paige I was gonna say and you. Johnny mm -hmm. and Charlie, it's a sanctuary. Mm -hmm. It's a place where they go in their home. And they believe know. in that idea yeah. about what yes, the house is supposed to be, that core idea. They, and they have faith in it yeah. and they want it. Exactly. And, they, they, and they live their life that By way. It. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And they're probably the happiest characters on the show. 
Yeah, it, I mean, yeah, at least they seem like it. Well, yeah. And so, your line that I liked also afterwards was when you had mentioned it, and then you said at the you know at the end of the day, it's it's just a house. It's a house. And I love that you said that because that actually kind of reminds me of my dad because my it's it's a very realistic uh, you know idea, and you always have to be at the you have to think about number one, mm. right? At so the end of the day, at the end of, you do. And what's gonna happen? What's your future gonna be like? So just mm. don't get caught up in it when you shouldn't be because mm. you're there for a job. Well, your let's job definitely is yeah. go um, into it. How well, how we think Jake's got here? Did yeah. Did you, did you want to do? I wanted to do Mike and Abby first because their story kind of corresponds with Jake's, and Jake's ends on it. Yeah, sure. So just we can do it really quick, like two yeah, minutes. Yeah. Mike and Abby, they want them to break up. Right. There you go. Mike doesn't yeah. want to break up with them. And, and she's just, and she took that random picture, and then that was kind of weird. She's all suspicious. All of them feel Jack like they the need to break up. They've all sort of mentioned it subtly. Yeah. And I would guess it's because maybe they've had. A relationship in the past, and they've seen it in badly or whatever, and they think, you know, get out before there's heartbreak. I think it's because they're they're kind of seeing Mike kind of fall. Yeah, like, because in a real in really, a real way. And it's annoying. What are you doing, Mike? Are you serious? Like, well, I'm not charming. gonna hurt her. I'm not gonna lie to her. Although, so Steven's been suspicious of Abby since the beginning, and I wasn't until last week yeah. when she just kept saying. I want to see your house. Take me to your roommates. I want to see your house. Take me to your roommates. And then grabbing the picture of them, I could see why she. But wanted... if you're dating a guy for like like two months and he never brings you ever and, to yeah. like where he lives, yeah, that's ever. true. And she's trying to be the cool girlfriend. Ever? Yeah. It was like, why you're can't like, we stay at your place one night? That's, you're like, I gotta know your dirty little secret. Well, then with the picture. Do you have a family? Are you living with your parents? Could that's, be a lot of things. That's crazy ass. Yeah. <laughs> you just gave crazy ass. Hey, what, why do you think she can come through? Spanish. That's all you need. <laughs> the picture wasn't too suspicious, but when they're on the beach and he's like trying to decide, like, should I break up with her? Right now, in this point of the show, he thinks that his assignment with uh, with Briggs is over and he's going to go back east soon. So he tells her, no, nah, I'm not breaking up with you. But the fact that she just jumped to that so immediately, she's like, oh, you're breaking up with me? Just tell me. What are you doing? It was like so emotionless that. No, because she, she's but at the she's still trying to be the cool girlfriend because she's doing it well. She liked him and she's like, okay, I know how to play the game to make him like me. But now it's getting weird and what Honestly, are you doing? You're being weird. When I Shut was single, up, it was a while ago. But if somebody showed the slightest sign of not wanting to be together, that's really how I would be. Well, yeah. okay. I mean, yeah. if you if you can't make it through this, we can't make it through life together. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So it just broke up really quickly. Maybe she's like that. Okay, so that's the last scene. Now for the piece de la Oh, wait, we have, to, we have to go back. I'm liking Paige more. I really hated her at the beginning. You don't Why? have to tell her that. Oh, <laughs> I loved her. I thought that, uh, ew, I guess it's because I felt like the writers just made her their dream girl, and she wasn't oh, really a I know, that he was saying character. that, too. He threw the She H-bomb. was so hot, and she was just walking around flirting and that's kissing guys That's because she's bad. Cheek, Paige, you're bad. Singing. I just was getting a very fake Marilyn Monroe vibe there. Well, she's but the flirty character. I'm she liking was, her more. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the fact that she stole the phone, that was cool. That was she's, cool cop move. She's cool. She, would, Charlie and Paige would be my best friends. Like, <laughs> easy. Uh, You're, like, like convinced. Con- oh, you have no doubt. There was none. 100% Whatsoever. assurance. I like that. Absolutely. They would be my best they friends. They would be my best friends. I sort of friends. feel like if I lived in Graceland, I might be the uptight cop. <laughs> yeah, and everyone would be like, don't invite her. No. <laughs> I would love you too, though. Oh, she just thinks that. <laughs> so Johnny and Johnny and Paige are still doing the relationship advice thing with I everyone. I know, That's right? Like, Johnny, the comic relief, but they're great. They're yeah, really they're good, good at together. it. They're Johnny's good. not always the comic relief, but I would say that his character of all of them is the most consistent, even when he's coming in and out of yeah. being undercover. His personality on that show is very much established. Mm-hmm. Established, yeah. yeah. And he's a cornball, but love it. Yeah. yeah. But we, we do hear from Paige that she's always going to be suspicious of Charlie mm-hmm. because she knows from what now to look on, for. Right? Yeah, yeah. She's she's DEA. Mm-hmm. Good. Second nature to her. Mm-hmm. And it's tough to trust somebody. Which sets up another interesting dynamic in the house, right? Yeah. yeah. There's right. another just another you know, a piece of like sort of distrust between two people in the right. house now. now Are you she's a gonna, perp? Yeah, now yeah. she's kinda gonna be investigating her on a on some level, you know? Mm-hmm. Definitely. Well, which is the only good thing I like about Charlie too. My like one of my favorite sayings is that an honest man has nothing to fear. Mm-hmm. Charlie is probably just helping her head and herself like well they know everything they need to know mm-hmm. like I'm not hiding anything so I, I don't have to be afraid yeah so she really knows good. she knows Paige is DEA yeah so she yeah she's, she's prob- not worried she probably about knows. it yeah, yeah. yeah she, when she told her that she definitely trusted their relationship more than making Paige do her job mm-hmm. and because Charlie knows she has to put herself in check mm-hmm. she has to check herself and she can't get 
better that they know to catch her up than for her to fall into a pattern if she keeps it to herself. Of, of the hiding, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you have this deal with these toy robots that were packed full of prescription pills, basically. Yeah. Which is funny. You always see drug dealers smuggle drugs over in the craziest stuff, like tied to cats. Or, you know, in people's body canals. I've seen this, like, the yeah. craziest thing. Mm -hmm. You've too. seen this, yeah? You've seen this. Online, I haven't what, seen the drug. What do you do when you leave here? <laughs> She's I've like, let me tell really you what I've seen. I'm just saying, Holy shit. Oh, boy. <laughs> your yeah. lives are your life. She has a house by the beach, if you know what Damn. I mean. <laughs> no, I haven't seen it with my own eyes. I have seen it on Google. It's search. <laughs> But anyway, he has these toys, and mm. it's funny because Johnny says, well, are, are the drugs gone? Can I have one? I want to give us a gift. <laughs> Yo, you cheap man. <laughs> <laughs> I call him out. You call him out, and then you give it to <laughs> your shit. That was the best part. I know, right? Well, we, at least I, have hey, always thought Jake's was distant. Yes. I always yeah. thought, I, I thought yes. that him as a Rasta guy was nicer than him in the house. Yeah. And he just isn't down to play. It's always laugh, 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 Jake's. Mm. Well, yeah. And we find out this episode why, mm -hmm. I think. You don't mm -hmm. like the house that much. Not into, I'm not, I'm, I'm there to do my job. Exactly, yeah. you know that it's your workplace. Yeah, I got, you know, and I think he has, his life is wanting to get back to his son. Mm -hmm. And so all this stuff to him is like, who cares? Yeah. Like, blah, and I don't care what John, who Johnny's dating and yeah. all that shit. <laughs> yeah. I have a son that I haven't seen in seven years. Of or, course. Yeah. So, know. which we yeah. find out, everyone. He goes over, mm -hmm. and this black girl, pretty black girl in a nurse outfit, opens the door. Cassandra. Yeah. Cassandra. And, and we hear them talking about a seven year old boy named Daniel. And all of us were in there like, like, oh my gosh, <gasps> what, who is it? Nephew who is or Daniel? son. Yes. Nephew or son. Nephew or son. <laughs> Let me see son? Him. What? what? Oh yeah. my god. And she so, wouldn't let him see him. I know. All of these That's things I don't like start to line up about who he is yeah. as a person. Like, did he choose his career over the family? Did she leave him? Honestly, <laughs> even the look on your face when, when you were you weren't going to argue with her, but you were trying to let her know. You still brought the toy. You're like, just give it to him. And then I felt like you're, it just all fell together. Right. Like, oh, I know. Like who Jake's is and yes, why exactly. he is the way he is. And then yeah. when you... Oh, man. Yeah. And, and maybe so, he made a decision at one point in time that he, that he felt, but now being away from his son all these years is starting to eat away at him. Mm -hmm. Good, because you're... Okay, never mind. I'm not, I'm not trying to know you. Because right we find out that you left intentionally. I, yeah, Jake's yeah. left them for, for you know, the good of... For, for their good. Exactly. Trying to be, you know, the bigger man. Mm -hmm. And he realizes that... And for a better life for them, which yeah, but, but it's still you can't take that back. Once you do that, like yeah. it's your family, you you decide, you make that decision. Whatever the reason is, and even if you think it's for their good, they don't see it that way. Right. Yes. And then, you know, obviously, she still harbors some yeah. resentment. Yeah, bitter. But all her hostilities are kind of justified. Yeah, yeah, and and I think Jake's knows that. That's why he doesn't argue with her. Mm -hmm. He's kind of like, you know, you're right. Just give her the just give, give him the, the toy. toy. But Whatever, gotta, she's fine because she's got a boo. <laughs> Because you, you still got to look out though, and you got you got to know who's with, who's who's drinking that Macallan. Yeah. Yeah. So you go to the bar to find. What I find funny is every celebrity guest I've ever interviewed or talked to on After Buzz, they all say you when they're talking about the character, or I. It's it's hard if you didn't use them in third person. You know what I'm saying? Right. Right. Like right, Sarah right, Drew right. talking about her characters, like, and then I did this, and then I did this. Right. It's just hard to separate, but sometimes they're so not like their characters. Yeah. Yeah, we're not very much alike. <laughs> <laughs> but what was crazy is that he used his spy skills for personal. He did. Game. I know. We all peeped mm -hmm. that quick. We're Which like, is also <gasps> probably not okay. Kosher. Oh right. yeah, definitely not. So he yeah. goes up to this guy in a bar, pretends he's his friend. He's like, oh, nice how did tat. how did he know that was the mom's boyfriend? Just like. Yeah, he just put it two and two together. He saw the scotch bottle. Okay. And he just, I mean, it just takes a couple though. You know, yeah. Meaning, I'm sure okay. you know that Cassandra doesn't drink, so she's obviously dating someone. Yeah. He looked into that, went to the bar, found so, the guy. Found the guy. Yeah. Looked at that too. You, you, Did you, you track research? anybody if exactly. you really want Exactly. I mean, I, that's your job. Yeah. You knew what you were doing. Yeah. So he tracked them down. Um, really, he just wanted to meet the guy. Meet the guy who's raising his son. That's so sad. You know? And just be like, I know, just I know who cried. he is. And, and, uh, <sighs> And then he wanted to see the picture because he hadn't seen his son in six years. That was hard. So oh. that was probably like the first time he's seen a pic because she won't even let him see anything. So that was probably the first. He doesn't even know what his son looks like. You know I what kept I mean? thinking too, like my my stomach was hurting because how ex like if 
I was pretending I was Jake's. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I was Jake's, and I was like, oh my god, he's gonna show me the picture. He's gonna show me the picture. Yeah. yeah. Like, and how oh. Jake had and to be your chill. heart probably yeah. just went to your throat. Like, yeah. Oh man. Because he could say. Hey, fun show fact. Me the can we say the fun fact about the picture? No. Yeah. Like, oh, the, that picture is my younger brother yeah, when he was a kid. Yeah. yeah so like, we thought it maybe it was you. No, no. It was my younger brother when he was a kid. How'd your younger is, brother feel about that? Is your younger brother the, the <laughs> video that you just? Yeah, the video I directed. That's him. Yeah, that's him when he was like. Four okay, or five. All right, cool, cool. So yeah. is he an actor as well? He he's does a little bit, but he's, awesome. he's a hip hop artist. That's he's, kind of his main thing. So is my younger brother. Yeah. So I just directed a music video. Great um, video. I liked it. it was for cool. him. Okay. Um, we just released it like a month ago. You saw it. Yes, I saw That's it. That's great. How did I, you see it? On uh, your Twitter. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's so crazy. I wonder if your brother knows my brother. Oh, I have We'll have to chat about it. So we don't really get to know whether you approve or disapprove of this guy. I mean, the fact that he didn't leave with a black eye and missing teeth means you kind of somewhat approve. Yeah, I mean, it's not, I don't know if it's a, a matter of approval or disapproval. It's just sort of wanting to, you know, wanting any sort of connection with your mm -hmm. son, you know? And right, knowing that, you know, there's definitely like a roadblock with her. She doesn't give me anything. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, let me just meet the guy who's, you know, who my son calls father. I, which she says, she says he, he doesn't even know you as his father. Yeah. She, well. He thinks this guy is, you know, his father. <sighs> so. And then we see later in the episode that Jake's is, is not going to get over this ever. It skewed the way he thinks about his job in the house. And the advice that he gave uh, Mike. Not good advice. Yeah, he's the only one saying don't break go up ahead, with stay her with if you love her because it's it, you know it's just a house and don't lose something and, good. And <laughs> that scene, I I got to tell you about that scene. It you say it's not good advice, but the way I read into it is you're the most realistic person. Yeah, in the house. I know, which I already said mm -hmm. too, but it just makes me mad because he was sentimental. <laughs> I mean, I think Jake's. I feel like Jake's is able to kind of step outside of and kind of see everything from like a bird's eye view and like what's really going yeah. on and have some kind of separation. And I feel like everybody else is sort of just, you know, Enmeshed. they're, they're in, in, in the eye of the tornado. And Jake's can kind of step out and be like, yeah, this is kind of like, mm -hmm. this isn't forever. Exactly. Yeah. The end you all be all. There's still, there's still life to live. Right. And you know, and. You won't be living here forever. That's what I wrote mm -hmm. down. Like that's the, that's the big line. Cause think about it. Like everyone in this house, they're, they're living a double life. But like, where does their real life go when they're mm -hmm. when they're putting it on hold to live this and, agent life? And mind you, they're not that old, so you, they can get caught up in it mm -hmm. very easily. Because this is, I mean, at our age right now, we're we're kind of involved in our lives. Imagine that being what you're doing after studying, after going to school, and then wow, I mean, yeah. And that's clearly, what you Jake's want. regrets his sacrifices. Mm -hmm. you know? and so, I think he's just trying to tell Mike, hey, man, if this is something that's real to you, I screwed up. Like I gave up something that was real to me. And I hate myself for it. Right. If she's, you know, real, don't do the same thing. Pay for it if you can, I guess. Because the house won't take care of you. Right. You know, at the end of the day, you're, you're going to end up alone. So. But it also goes back to Briggs when I don't know why I can't remember their names right now. <laughs> uh, the two others. Mike, Charlie, Paige, no, Johnny. The, the ones that left. The ones that aren't in Graceland anymore. Oh, Lauren. Oh, Lauren, Lauren yeah. and, uh, and uh, Donnie. Donnie. You don't have yeah. to remember Donnie. their names. They're no, gone in it, Florida. It goes <laughs> back, but it goes back to that. Lauren was obviously completely in love with Donnie. Yeah. And you can't have that in the house. Like, they, they had no future. So the fact oh, that Donnie dude. was out of the house, she can't have that. Like, she can't. He's not going to wait for her. So Briggs getting her out of the house, I mean, that's kind of, okay, your, your life can continue now. So it kind of gives you a more insight into the good side of what Briggs did for for her. So do you, uh, you may not be able to answer this, but will we see a flashback of him as a younger man making that decision? Who? You. I mean, Jace. I can't say that. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'm just, I'm just wondering if we'll <laughs> see more about that or if he'll ever be able to love again. Uh, <laughs> no, Julie wants you to tell her everything. <laughs> that that's, her, that's what she wants. Is that her stick? Yes. So we got... <laughs> so? <laughs> we got seven minutes to get through the mission. Oh, wow. So let's rock out this mission so we can talk to Brennan J. McLeod. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this mission, right? You know, it's, it's, it's going down. It's actually going down pretty hardcore with Briggs. I know. It just it keeps getting better. This Sometimes guy. when television shows drag on plots for several episodes, you're you're done, you're over it. But this just gets later. Are you guys still into it? Well, oh, we yeah. just found out <laughs> what Did Briggs you see is me? doing to I was them. like sitting yeah. 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 Good. Good. Oh, my gosh. I can't. So okay. I air kicked the, the screen. <laughs> so I'm, I'm having 
having a really hard time even remembering what happened with this plot, aside from what we learned on the pier. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll run through it real quick for you then. Okay, good. So, Bellows, Bello can't make demand with product yes. because the torpedo. So, he starts the, cutting his product with fentanyl, which will kill people because it has the same effect, but it is very dangerous Lethal. to mix with anything. Mm -hmm. So, Mike's freaking out. Bello basically says to Mike, hey, this is your fault, though. Somebody somebody hypothetically could say that not us not being able to make demand is your fault, Mike, which is kind of a threat. So Mike wants to bring in Bello, arrest him right there, talks to Briggs about it. Briggs says no, because we got to connect Bello to the big fish, take everybody down at the foundations. So that's what's going on with that. And then... Bello admits it's a weakness to cut drugs. Mike pitches the new supplier, use Odin Rossi. And this is how they're connecting um, Charlie not being able to go back mm -hmm. in because she's so close to it now. And m they don't want to use uh, they don't want to use Briggs with Odin personally. Well, they don't want to use they don't want to use Briggs through Quinn again, is what I mean right. to say. But what we did see is Charlie is not dropping this thing. Yeah. She is with, after with this Odin? guy. Yeah. yeah. She is after she this guy. She has a vendetta. She does. She's a whistler. Whistler. Yeah, she's trying to avenge his death. She's trying time. to avenge his death and probably also making her ghost with the heroin thing. That's directly related to him as well. Mm -hmm. So we learned that nobody's ever seen this mythical man. They have completely different descriptions of him and how he dresses. Nobody's My favorite one was the face. Argentinian with the ponytail. I know. <laughs> so this guy's like the Kaiser Sose of the drug world, and they need to figure out who he is. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. That's pretty much, yeah. And they so, go, yeah. Oh, yeah, and they That's go on the pier. Well, I know. El Segundo Pier, they decide that they're going to finally have a meetup between middleman Briggs, mystery man Odin, and Bella, Bella. who's always mean. Just mean. <laughs> so they go, and they, they go to meet on the pier, and, of course, Odin doesn't show. Just like Odin didn't show the time that Charlie was there mm -hmm. and that Briggs was also there. <gasps> bum, so bum, bum. her shooting up was pretty much Briggs's fault unless okay anyway okay I know You're just so like we, see them, we see them in the command tower he has his his little watch on where they're supposed to be able to hear and all of a sudden it shuts off yep technical malfunction just in time to hear that Dun, dun, You're looking dun. at him. What? You're already meeting with him. I, he oh, just did hand on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. didn't show. In person. Oh, yes, he did. So I'm we have these cameras <laughs> set up so they can see who's who, and they're making bets on who they think is Odin. And then he just pulls down his sleeve a little sample of heroin, which is, there you go, Briggs, Briggs at it again. And I have a theory, but I won't tell you until predictions, okay. but it's it's... I'm let's pretty sure say, it's like the entire episode that you have a theory on. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's just say that I don't think Briggs is maliciously Odin. Let's just say that Stephen is one step away from being a beautiful mind here. Yes, <laughs> he's got all these different levels. Dun, dun, dun. But whatever it is, it, it pretty much the viewers and, and us think that it's one of two situations. Either he is the big bad Odin, or he's taking advantage of the fact that nobody knows what this guy looks like. Mm -hmm. And putting himself in a position to be close with Bella, which he never could do before. And, right. and the thing is, we don't know why yet. We still don't know why Briggs is doing all this. Yeah, why there's, there's something specific. Do right? Like, yeah. I like, know what is he's he not after? bad. I know it's something that is going to be pretty intense and with reason, but there's just no way that he's just going to be this dumb, bad cop. Maybe he is. I don't yeah, know yet. Be. So the deal is, no. deal is he can he can maintain it for 80% of the cost that Bellows is dealing with the, with the cartel. So Briggs is selling under the Casa cartel and breaking this huge connection that they have with Bella right now across the state lines. So some would say that this is a huge blow to the people who could have put Briggs in that torture situation as kind mm. of a revenge from Briggs to them. Whatever it is, Briggs is just paying fast and loose with the law, and a lot of people are getting hurt <laughs> in the process. I love that. He is. Look at all the people that might die because they're not getting good heroin. Yeah. Or, like, look at Charlie. Look at what mm -hmm. he's done to all these people's mm -hmm. lives. And I don't care if this is an intricate plot for him to catch And you could see him get cartel. frustrated every time something happens where it's like, that wasn't supposed to happen, right. and then he just has to deal with it. When Charlie said the thing, he's like, oh, Fuck. son yeah, of I'm a biscuit gonna, eater. I'm going to have a hard time justifying Son of a biscuit eater. <laughs> i got to say the beauty of this scene where he's making the deal with Bello, though, 
the beauty of the scene is that he's selling the product that they he just stole from the cartel. Right. So when he says it's just as good as theirs, he's literally selling their product yeah. back to Bello mm -hmm. after stealing it from him. Yeah. He's definitely an evil mastermind, even if he's not evil. I just don't believe the the money situation. I just don't get why he would do it. Yeah, I know. And going into that, we did have a few meetings with. Uh, Mike's control officer this episode. Oh yeah, yep. And the first one he gives them he gives them a gift. They talk Great a little gift. they talk a little bit about different things and stuff. Mm -hmm. And what if he's not this guy? What if he well, no, not this Mike, guy? Well, uh, no, Mike had his back the second meeting. Oh, okay. And then he gives them this uh, picture that's a framed it's, it, it's his a, dad a used to take pictures. Yeah, his, his grandfather, grandfather used to take pictures of crimes. But scenes. they were classified so he's never yeah. seen one up close and then this one was a great shot because he caught himself in the reflection so it was very sentimental gift with really girly wrapping and we don't <laughs> it was know. it was a tiffany blue i'm pretty I sure know. i thought what is he gonna give him diamonds <laughs> 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 but he is not sitting well with me right now i don't trust him as much as i don't trust briggs for some wow. reason Mike? and it's the it's that Mike? scene no no the co oh yeah no me neither that kind of from the officer. beginning i was like well, you Juan want something else but so dillo Juan Medill. Yeah. So he tells he tells Marillo. Juan Medill that uh, <laughs> he go. tells him about Narc Anon that Briggs was at Narc Anon and he asks for help for Briggs and he puts his back out there pretty hardcore. Mm -hmm. He's like, "Look, this is a good cop. No, he's a great agent, and he does all these things, and Let's we need him. to help him. I don't want him to lose his job." And he it reaffirms the fact that yeah, all the cases would be opened again, and this. Juan Medillo. Badillo. Medillo. Mario. Badillo. Mario. Badillo, guys. Agrees. agrees. It's, it's Badillo. John Badillo. Oh, my God. Um, he agrees that... He, he agrees, but it's such a... It's such a snake face lie. It's like, yeah, we're going to help him. And I feel like this is going to come to bite Briggs in the ass mm -hmm. because the CEO is going to help him by exposing the truth. Yeah. Because this is going to help they his They might case. be on it together. There's or a lot maybe, of stuff going on. Maybe right? everything like, has to do with... Briggs and the look, you guys. And Juan. Whenever we were looking at that guy oh, too, and gee. I saw his, you know, strong Latino eyes, he might be the jangler too. I'm pretty sure he's not oh. Latino. Now I think any guy with those eyes is the jangler. So he could have. Watching this scene, I felt oh, like this no. show throughout the seasons can get more and more kind of similar to Burn Notice in the fact that it keeps going up the chain. In that this is something, this has more to do with with Briggs than this heroin than anything like that. I think this goes higher and higher and higher, and we're going to see that devolve or evolve through the seasons. Um, and it was just such a snake face lie that I think it's really going to fall in. And he doesn't believe. I don't think the CEO believes the Casa story because I think the CEO knows a lot more mm -hmm. than he's yeah, letting on. Yeah, because he said just like that. Yep, just like that. Yeah, right. Get out of here. What do you mean just like that? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Exactly. Exactly. <sighs> yes. So, fantastic episode, and ugh, we're not on next week. We'll see what happens the week after that. But we would love to get an opportunity to hear more about our special guests. Yeah. We are joined here by whoop, whoop. Brandon J. McClen McLaren. 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 Yeah, did I just Modillo. McLaren. Modillo, yeah. So. You, you've had roles on Graceland, of course, and you've had roles on Falling Skies, mm -hmm. The Killing. Mm -hmm. You've been a Power Ranger. Mm -hmm. I, I know. You know, Toby on She's the Man. Toby on She's the Man. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you still have a ton of fans for oh, that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because um, when did that come out? Like, oh. Oh seven, oh six, yeah. yeah. So, I can't believe that's that been seven years ago. And it's on TV all the time, apparently. Yes, it's on MTV and and yeah. So. But yeah. you were you were mentioning to us earlier that you had done an After Buzz show right around the time you got this. Can you Which tell us about great, what that? Yeah, little, I would love it to hear is about the audition process. Well, I, I it was funny. I I um I was on Falling Skies and I was shooting it in Vancouver and uh, this came across you know my my eyes and my manager was like we love uh, the script. And so I put it on tape, and they're like, oh, great, screen test. And so I came down, and I tested, and I got it. And so I went back up to, to Vancouver to the Falling Skies people, and I'm like, hey, like, I, got, I, I just got a pilot. And they're like, okay, great, like, congrats. And then, like, the next episode, they killed me. <laughs> like, literally, the next episode. They killed you in a pretty <laughs> yeah. gruesome way. Too. Yeah, oh, yeah. No. They're like, so... So I showed up, and they're like, so we're going to kill you next episode. Gosh, this... I'm glad the pilot took off. Yeah, I know, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they were great. They were great about it. They were just kind of like, you know, you know, great, go do it, like... Bye. But it, it was it was a it was an amicable uh, split. Um, but when I came on this show, it was the episode before my character died, 
and I had known I knew that I was dying because right. I already shot it, but it hadn't aired yet. So they my the interviewers didn't know. So they were like trying to like get stuff out of me and I was like oh man I can't tell them that like I'm, 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 I'm like I'm dead the next episode um, so it was great and I think like they tweeted at me like that next week they're like oh my god you hit it so well oh um, and that's hilarious yeah yeah but uh, but yeah so I just booked this pilot uh, when I was here last excellent uh, which is like a year and a half ago so yeah. what attracted you to the script um you know, I there was nothing really that I had read that pilot season anyway that was like that. You know, um, and and I really like the fact that it's not a, a procedural in the traditional sense. You know, it's it's a serialized drama, and you kind of go home with these characters. You know what I mean? Which I think is great. A lot of times with crime dramas, like uh, the CSI. show's about the crime. Mm -hmm. Not really about the people who solve it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just had an hour-long conversation about the house and mm -hmm. the lives of these people and how they're, they're unraveling before our eyes. And um, that was just really interesting. And as an actor, it's great. Of course. It's great mm -hmm. Especially because within that character, you're painting different characters. Yeah, you know what I mean? Great. So, uh, so yeah. And Jeff Easton is fantastic to work with. He's, like, really collaborative, which is, like, great. Because, you know, it's not always like that. So, yeah, uh, there was, like, a number of things. That's one of the things that I've always loved about USA is the way they handle criminals. Mm -hmm. It's not a black-and-white area. Mm -hmm. Everybody has different dimensions. Even it's if you're doing something real. bad, it exactly. could have a lot Everyone. of different reasons. Yeah, exactly. Definitely. So yeah. I was looking into some of the previous work you've done and everything, mm -hmm. and it kind of made me worried for your character's life in this show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've seen you stung to death by bees in Dead Before uh, Dawn. Yeah. I saw, oh, you saw Dead Before Dawn? I, when did you see that? I looked it up and I watched it today. Oh. And I, was like, I was waiting for it. I was like, I bet he dies in this. When does he die? Oh, so, yeah. We just had a screening in Comic-Con on, on the weekend. Really? Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. I just saw it for the first time on Friday night. Really? Yeah. Wait, yeah, it's... It's it, a new movie coming out? Yeah, it's going to be on uh, DirecTV. I think it's going to be in, in some theaters in nice. L.A., like select theaters, yeah. It's certainly interesting. It's a comedy. It's it's right. the first, uh, it's the first like, Canadian... 3D. Like, 3D movie, and it introduces the the form of Zeman, or zo Zemans, yeah, yeah zombie Zeman. demons, oh. but it's, like, a comedy. It's like, that sounds terrible. It's that like, sounds really scary. It's very comedic. It's, like, super kind of, like, Shaun of the Dead kind of, like, mm. you know, like that kind of, you know, zombie movie. It's, cra it's crazy. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And your character in it is a little bit crazy, too. Yeah, a little bit. I love it. <laughs> uh, and then I also saw, I, I went back to rewatch a scene in, uh, Tucker and Dale versus Evil. Yeah. To see you be light on lit on fire. I got lit on fire in that. Yeah. And then the killing. Of course, you get you don't get killed. I don't but get you killed. Get the the crap. I get the crap assaulted out of you. heavily. Yeah. And falling skies, you have an alien eat its way out of you. I and did attack people. So. I did. <laughs> yeah. He's just describing all these things. So this is true. It really made me worry for your character in the show because yeah. you are the only character that is so kind of far removed from the house, uh -huh. and especially after the last scene we have in this episode, uh -huh. you really—it's kind of a depressing scene. Yeah, you definitely get the sense that like Jake's is not buying into the idea of of the house. I feel like it has it leaves room for your character to develop though. Because that doesn't mean it's he's still neutral. Everyone else has more potential I think to just so have something horrible happen and then mm -hmm. they bounce. You're solid. You're kind of content where you are because you know what's going on and you're just doing what you have to do. Mm -hmm. Everyone else is getting involved in things that they shouldn't be getting involved in. And and you have to remember that like everybody in the house has like a very different style. Mm -hmm. And that's Jake's style, but I mean there there's still more coming. Um, you know, he's just, he handles his stuff mm -hmm. in a different way. Okay. He's, now, we just know for sure that Jake's is the one character that has something that he's emotionally attached to. Right. Definitely. Like a real, like a he real life has a weakness outside of And it is person. alive, mm -hmm. even if it doesn't love And it's, and then there's like definitely like a pull there from like, you know, the house or like, you know, my son, you know, and he's, you can see it in, in his, in the way he acts, the way he is mm -hmm. with the other, uh, housemates of that course. he's always kind of one foot in one foot out right he's, he's not always present there you know because he has other stuff uh other, other stuff going on and your character definitely had a different feel between the pilot and the series did you know that you had a son yeah i'll tell you i'll tell you a little secret <laughs> so in the pilot you know the first scene where i'm at, where i'm introduced Rasta. Yeah. With the Rasta, yeah. Yeah. yeah and then With i the walk birds. away from her 
in in the pilot, what we shot was then I get into my car and I pull down the the visor. Oh, and it's a picture of Daniel. And it's a picture of my kid. Oh. And they chose not to include that in the pilot. Good so choice. we Good, shot yeah. that, and that was written in the pilot. And then when I saw it, that wasn't in there anymore. Mm -hmm. And Jeff was like, you know what? We're gonna save that for later. Right. And I think it's a great oh, me move, too. Yeah. right? Yeah. Like I feel like that's better the storytelling. Of that? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, you know, um, and that's what they've done with my character. They've really kind of just laid it out slowly, which Good, I because love. Because we're gonna get tired quickly, and I don't want to. Like I'm excited to. Mm -hmm. Like that was awesome to have something new about you know, because there's still more things that we could learn about Paige, or still more mm -hmm. things that we can learn about each character. Mm -hmm. They can't just give it up all the way. Exactly. They yeah. Can't. So uh, yeah. So that was supposed to be revealed in the uh, in the pilot, and they chose that's, to that's not. That's cool. Yeah. Awesome. It really made cool. it so much more impactful too, because you've never so. seen a picture of your son. Like mm -hmm. that's. That's wow. And That's we got to know you better. a little bit better. Yeah. Like we, you mm -hmm. know, I, my, I feel like I was able to to like Jake's more. And then when that happened, I, I was, you know, yeah. I, I was. And I then was, Jake's was not just like the asshole of moment. the house, right? you know, right. like you empathize with him. I, like, oh. I felt judgy mm -hmm. because right. I loved him as a Jamaican guy. And I'm like, he's not a funny Jamaican guy. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with him? And I didn't feel compassion for him until now. And mm -hmm. I thought, man, you never know what people have going on. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And exactly. that is great. That's why you don't judge my... I yeah, know, because you it. never know when somebody goes home what they deal with. Exactly. You know? um, yeah, it's very good. I'm 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 very happy with uh, with how they wrote uh, Jake's this year. So, That's how are you similar and different from Jake's as a person? Oh man, um, uh, yeah, I know I'm a lot different. I'm like a lot more goofy and like silly. Jake's is very serious, mm -hmm. you know, um, and he has a lot of burdens. He has a lot of like weight. Yeah. Like, like, like he's gone through so much. Yeah, you're, you're you know? such a, your character's so grown. Yeah, there's more. Like I said, there's so much more of his backstory to mm -hmm. be revealed. Um, that yeah, he just has a lot of weight to him. Um, and and I I try not to live my life that way. Um, I I'm a naturally happy person. Mm -hmm. That's just kind of, you know what I mean? Yeah. And Jake's is like, I think the opposite. He's just naturally like heavy and weighty and he thinks mm -hmm. and he's, you know? Um, so yeah, yeah. Can I ask about your versatility with characters? Yeah. Because I, from all these shows, you go from looking 17 uh -uh. To, looking, <laughs> to looking like a father of a seven-year-old child, mm -hmm. like in Graceland. And I, I mean, of course, because I just went from watching Dead Before Dawn, yeah. and now I see you in this episode, and it's not even just the beard, it's just your whole presence uh -huh. is your that persona, of Your persona, absolutely. Yeah, it's that of somebody who is completely more mature and is in control of the situation as opposed to somebody who's just completely crazy. Right, right. <laughs> right. Yeah, 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 yeah. So how do you, what's your process for getting in and out of these characters that have to be so widely spaced apart? I mean, for me, I, I, like my, I have a belief that like, you know, we all can sort of be all things, you know what I mean? Uh, we all have the ability in us. So it's just a matter of like accessing that, you know, like if you grew up in a different circumstance, you could look the way you do, but have a completely different sort of way about you, depending on your experience. Um, so, I mean, with Jake's, uh, you know, I grew the beard for him. That Did was, they ask you to? No, I just, I showed up, I showed up uh, at the pilot, I showed up with a beard. And I didn't ask anybody anything, and they didn't say anything. And I was like, great. <laughs> Um, cause I wanted to look different, uh, like, than I had before, you right. know, especially from like the last kind of thing that people really know me from is the killing mm -hmm. where I was clean shaven and I played this kind mm -hmm. of very kind of straight nerdy kind of the teacher. Um, I wanted to kind of, so I wanted to look different and then, and then I, I, you know, I gained about 15 pounds. I started lifting a lot of weights for Jake's cause I just felt that he was just a heavier, you know, Great he's job. just like a heavier yeah. dude and he just kind of sat, he was just a little more steady and, um, and, uh, and 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 the way Jeff wrote him, I don't know. Like I remember like getting the getting the audition and kind of just understanding this guy. Like and he mm, was kind ah, of the beauty of, of was, all of it. It's of a all weird it. thing, you know. But just like, oh, I get this guy. He's just a guy who's just like he's no bullshit. He's not animated. He doesn't have to be. He doesn't give a fuck what you think about him. Can yeah. I say that? I'm sorry. Not it's really. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you know. Do. And and so I kind of just got him, and and that's kind of how I. I that's where like the genesis of his character um, came from, and then Jeff Easton kind of lets me play around with like the dialogue and it's the best. Awesome. so it's 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 great. It's it's been uh, I've loved playing uh, this guy. The really writers have. told us that 
Jake's and Johnny together are their favorite to write. They yeah. said yeah. they saw them together and they were funny. Yeah. And they were so surprised and they're like, score. <laughs> well, we y'all have some funny y'all characters. Y'all characters are very, uh, like, homies. Like, you guys, you guys, see, like, you know, oh, excuse no, me. No, definitely. Homies, okay. Or like, on, on the show? On the, yes, on the show. Like, the, you guys seem that way, like, close. When you guys, uh, almost as if you could be, like, related, like, well, the level. thing is, like, they they are, I feel like, the, the most opposite characters in the show. Like, Johnny's all about good times and ladies and let's yeah. go get drunk before <laughs> we, you know what I mean? And Jake's is, like, on the other end. Jake's is just there to work. Mm -hmm. He has a kid. But you both he's know been, each other He's been so there well. for a while. And so I feel that, like, that can go well, but that can also cause conflict. Johnny's like a little brother, though, especially, like, exactly. when you gave Mike your orange juice. Yeah, 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 that like, kind of, that things, kind like, of thing. He, he knows you down to But that. then I guess it was episode four where yeah, like, they kind of the clash lead, a bit. Yeah. yeah. And everything. That and was... He's irresponsible and, and mm -hmm. you know, and, and so, uh, yeah, they, they, they have a, an interesting relationship. But he, that can sometimes make for funny. When, right. like, oh, two opposite people kind of are forced Absolutely. in a situation together and to deal with one another. Oh, that's fantastic. A people lot of love comedy to see that, of can, course. can come from that, yeah. yeah. I love it. I'm like, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Deal with it. Yeah, deal with figure it, it out. <laughs> so, out of the series thus far, what has been your favorite scene to film? Oh, that's a great question. Oh, man. Uh... There's one coming up, <laughs> and what? I can't tell you what it is. Okay. Yeah. Well, t There's one coming up, though, giving us spoilers. Yeah. How will we know when it's that scene? I bet it's with Cass Cassandra. Um, <laughs> oh, man. You're going to have to maybe call me? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Or uh, I'll tweet at you. Okay. I'll tweet it after Buzz. When it's, I'll be like, that scene. I don't know. <laughs> okay. How no, can we do absolutely. I'll come back. Maybe I'll come back. There you go. You're always alive. Right. After that episode, so. and we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> we only allow really smart hosts on this show, so we've kept that seat open. Oh. Yeah. We're going to have lots of guests. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, there was a lot of, I mean, um, everybody on our show is so committed to, like, making the work as real as, as possible. Mm -hmm. Like, all the actors. Like, we, we believe in this show so much, which is so Good, great. of course. And we all love working with one another. Um, so, I mean... Even like the scenes where like it's all of us together, that's some of the funnest scenes that we do because we're it all is. just it's messing so around. Cool. It's like a clubhouse, man. Yeah, it's like six of us. Everybody's right? cracking jokes. Where's and, the bloopers? You know, oh man, oh, there's a great one. There's a great one floating around. I've seen it. Really? I don't have it, but there is like one. Like on YouTube, we can look for. I don't know. I'll ah. find it. I know there is one. Somebody has one in their possession in Los Angeles. Okay, okay. I'll we'll find, have to find it. Find them. Yeah. Well, I have one last question. Do yeah. you guys have any more? Well, I, I just I want. Okay. No, you go. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was just gonna say um I. My only other question was that I was interested in knowing about how you like to direct the video, the alma mater. Yeah, alma mater. Yeah, my younger brother. Said, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, real quick, he wanted me to direct his video, first video he's ever done for mm -hmm. like a year, and I kept saying no because I've never directed before. Right. And finally, I was like, fine, I'll do it. I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll do it. And uh, and so I came up with the concept, and it turned out really well. Like I'm really really proud of it. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys can tweet the link, maybe. I don't know. Definitely. Yeah, yes. I'll, I'll send it um, to you. I'll retweet it tonight. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes. from the AfterBuzz site. Yeah, I know you guys have a, How many followers does AfterBuzz have? Oh, uh, you know, a billion, yeah. million. Yeah, quite a few. A Which lot. I would like to take that moment to tell all the AfterBuzzers, please don't forget to subscribe on iTunes and YouTube and comment and let us know what you think. Let mm -hmm. us know what you think about Brandon, if you were happy. If you Only if it's good, more. though. Yeah. Only if it's good. <laughs> don't hate. But... <laughs> Yes. So what's don't what's that. his Twitter too? Because so we can. Give yeah, him a it's up. it's. I will. Um, would you, should I say it? At, yeah, let's say it. It's done. at Alma Mater Music One, the number one. That's your Twitter handle. That's not personal? mine. That's my no. Okay. That's my brother, the musician whose video I directed. Alma Mater Music One. Alma okay. Well, my last question is along these lines. Do you have any other projects? I mean, you've got the music video you just directed, the movie that's coming out. Uh, no, that's it for now. Um, and and you know, hopefully. Uh, we get a, a pickup, and we get to go back to. Uh, I've seen the ratings. I think. Oh, you I have another question. Up. Oh yeah. Um, are you single? Oh, no, I'm not. <laughs> no. Oh, Ladies, you heard it. Getting the scoop. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, right. cool, man. Let's do news and gossip and predictions real quick. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I have one news. news and gossip. So. We saw that Mr. Juan Delio 
just got a major, major part in Game of Thrones. Oh, yes. Yes. I read that. He has been cast as <laughs> the Red Viper. Badillo, red? you mean? Badilla. <laughs> I think, yeah, the Red Viper. Yeah. He got this Modelo? major casting. <laughs> that was <laughs> All types of people were wondering who was going to get this role, and yeah. it landed on him. Yeah. That's awesome. So maybe that means we won't see him around, or who knows? Or maybe but he'll get caught up in something. Where do they shoot that? I have no idea. I don't question. Toronto. They can't kill him on, they can't kill him <laughs> on Graceland <laughs> because he'll obviously be killed on Game of Thrones. I know, right? Yeah, <laughs> everybody gets, gets killed, killed right? on Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do our predictions. I can't do that. No, yeah, okay. okay. And now, you're don't worry. You can totally TV. just say something and throw us all I know, right? I'll go first. I think that the Jangler is either the Mexican officer that Briggs used to work with or the control officer. If not, the same person. And I'm going to go with Abby's evil. I want you guys to say if you think she's a secret agent or just a girlfriend, too. Abby's just annoying to me, and okay. then um, <laughs> I also think that the El Hombre Llave is the Mexican officer, or, or something of that sort. I think that we're gonna find out that Briggs is better than what we all th are making him out to be, or maybe he has a good solid plan because he does keep it to secret, so it works better sometimes. Also, and then uh, that we're gonna have uh, that you're gonna run into Daniel, I think. Your son. Oh, you think I'm gonna meet the like son? Maybe like he some, won't like be able something's to let it gonna go. happen. Like the same the same instance that you had with the uh, old boy, the yeah. guy's uh, your Cassandra's boyfriend, mm -hmm. something mm. like that of the sort. Yeah, we've definitely not seen the last of the son. See, all ready for this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Here, here. I know. Ready? <laughs> all right. So Briggs's character right now. You know, the reason they're looking into Briggs is because he's going so deep into the Casa Cartel and digging them out and digging them out and mm. digging them out. He's doing this because he has some sort of grudge. I don't believe that he was the one who was jacked up with heroin. I believe that his guy who was working down there had that same story, and all of his cases with the Casa Cartel got reopened and flushed down the toilet, and they all got set free. Now he's on this vendetta against the Casa Cartel, but the government has been working and supplying the Casa Cartel with this gigantic conspiracy, and that's why they're stopping Briggs because they don't want Briggs digging into this more because he'll find out and they can't stop him because he's such a famous detective. And that's what's gonna happen on Graceland next week, everyone. So tune in. <laughs> yes, we will not see you guys. Could next you imagine week. if he was like a hundred percent right? Like it's everything he said was before. absolutely it's correct. Happened. Imagine that. All right, everyone. Where can we find each other on the internet, on the World Wide Web? I'm Julie Parton. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at J U L I E P A R T I N. And my name is Stephanie Georgie. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Stephanie Georgie. Stephanie with a P-H, Georgie, G-I-O-R-G-I. -I. Um, I'm Brandon J. McLaren. You can only find me on Twitter at Brando J-A-Y. Brando J. And on Graceland, technically. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm Stephen Lemieux. You can find me at Stephen Lemieux, S-T-E-P-H-E-N-L-E-M-I-E-U-X, on uh, Instagram at S-R Lemieux, and doing the Dexter Get Out Alive with Bear Grylls, and, of course, Graceland after shows here at AfterBuzz TV and Twisted on ABC Family. This has been a great show. Great know, time. Right? Guys, so thank you guys. This has been thank a you. whole yeah. whack of fun. Thank you we'll for coming. We'll see you again on our series. Yeah. We'll see you Come guys back. in two yeah. weeks. Yes. Have a good night. Toodles. Yeah, two weeks. Oh. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. You later. <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.